Now, if you think you can smell something funny right now, spare a thought for your dog, because they can detect concentrations of scent maybe a hundred times lower than we can. And so, of course, they're used for all sorts of sniffy and whiffy jobs. And so to help us learn about that, I have got with me Justo. G'day, Justo. Hello. And uh, his dog, Pinta. Hi, Pinta. Who is, of course, a beagle. Now, Justo, um, you train and uh, handle sniffer dogs, right? That's what I do, yes. So, what kind of jobs uh, are they useful? They're sniffing out cancer mm -hmm. and uh, they're using them for epilepsy mm -hmm. and uh, with their, their natural instinctive behaviours of them mm -hmm. sniffing those kind of um, ailments. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, the regular things like um, customs dogs and um, quarantine dogs mm -hmm. uh, and for um, explosives as well. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so you actually, some of your dogs actually work detecting explosives, right? That's right, yes, exactly. Now, how many different kinds of things can one individual dog be trained to reliably uh, detect? Well, it's, um, they can actually detect um, many different odours, um, trained odours, mm -hmm. but it's, they're not reliable for them to be sniffing on anything other than one. Okay, so it's that's why you... Not 100% reliable. Okay, so that's why, um, off camera before, you were telling me that, uh, say, down at the port, you have a customs dog, you have a quarantine dog, that's and right. you have an explosives dog, and they're all different dogs. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So there's, a, there's a problem that um, if a dog can, might be searching for one particular odour, and then, that, but that dog may actually come across a different odor right. and indicate incorrectly right, okay. on what he's actually really looking for. Right. <laughs> so, so it's better to have separate dogs. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but if you're doing this for fun, you could actually train your dog to detect all sorts of things. That's if you right. Want to. Exactly. Yeah. yeah right. On command, but uh, have a different word association for a different scent, mm -hmm. and uh, the dog will actually understand that, just like a sit and a drop. Right. Okay. They know, they know the difference, difference between one and another. Excellent. Well, it's yeah. quite fascinating. Like. Um, like you mentioned, um, you're using their natural instinctive behaviours, so obviously you can't teach a dog to smell. But how do you actually um, how do you actually train the dog to be able to do, to do and do what yes, you're asking it yes. to? Well, you start off you start off on on, on, on an odour that you mm -hmm. you want the dog to detect, mm -hmm. and uh, that you reinforce the behaviour, you you reward the behaviour mm -hmm. um, for for the dog sniffing that particular odour, mm -hmm. and that reward is a uh, kicks in a survival mechanism mm -hmm. that they have and uh, they will actually look for it again for that reward. Okay, so it could be as simple as um, you have a clean sock and a smelly sock and when the dog goes to the smelly sock it gets a reward That's fine. and you build it from there. Exactly, yep. Yeah, right. And I often say to, say, say to kids the best way to teach your dog to detect the scent is to get your dad's smelly socks. Because <laughs> they're guaranteed to be the worst ones in the house. That's oh, right. I don't know about that. If people who've got teenage kids then uh, that's debatable. <laughs> yeah, they won't have any trouble finding that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what actual jobs do you have your dogs trained to do? Well, mainly uh, my dogs are trained to detect termites mm -hmm. um, on a, on, in a home environment. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually, you know, a problem that's quite widespread and that mm -hmm. people can't um, see and detect, mm -hmm. you know, and it's very difficult to detect termites. Cause so normally when you get like a termite guy around, they'll, they just, it's a visual inspection, right? That's they right. just uh, actually go under there and yep. have a little look exactly. around. Yep. Yeah, and, as, and, and quite often um, they're not visible. Right, okay. And, but as a dog uh, sniffs, cause cat can sniff through just about anything, yep. so therefore we don't need to see with the dog. The dog can tell us exactly where they are. Right. Oh, yeah. that's fantastic. That's mm. a great job for a dog. Now, I presume um, all dogs have a decent sense of smell, but I noticed that all of yours are beagles, so tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so I use beagles because um, they're a very robust dog, mm -hmm. and uh, they've been domesticated to do just that, to mm -hmm. sniff. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they certainly like to sniff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's all they do, and which is why they um, they run off a lot because yeah. as soon as they get onto a little scent, mm -hmm. they're out of there. Mm -hmm. They're looking, to, we're looking for it. Nothing will stop them. Mm -hmm. uh, they climb fences and dig holes and all mm -hmm. sorts of things. But you know, if you look after them, um, like I said, they're very robust. They're very clean. Mm -hmm. So if they do dig a hole, they they clean themselves up quite quickly. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they've got the best noses for the Excellent. job. Uh, is there a lot of variation between individual animals as well, though, within one breed? Um, yes, there can be. Um, it comes down more to uh, to temperament, I would say. Oh, okay. Um, because some dogs have a more w of a will to sniff than others, mm -hmm. um, even though the the capabilities are the same. Right. So their their actual sense of smell is the same, but they might not That's be as, right. as willing to to please exactly. or as trainable or whatever. Exactly. Yes, okay. and you know they're, they're not so um, motivated on on the other rabbit or mm -hmm. a cat, the smell of a cat. You know. Mm -hmm. They'd rather see it run rather than try and find it with their, their noses. Right, okay. Yeah. And what about um, other breeds? Well, some breeds uh, are not always suited, like um, 
breed with uh, short snouts, mm -hmm. like um, pugs, mm -hmm. um, bulldogs, yeah, boxers, mm -hmm. where the nose have been modified by mm -hmm. selective breeding, mm -hmm. um, and the, the 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 nasal capacities have been um, you know diminished in that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so probably people could probably still try doing it recreationally, but. Yes. You may not have as much success. No, that's right. But, you know, um, I'm not saying that they're, they're no good. It's yeah. just probably not ideal. Not as good, yeah. yeah. Okay. So talk us through when you go out on a termite sniffing job, how does that actually work? Well, basically, um, the dog has to be set up, just like any tool, mm -hmm. okay? Now, the, uh, the condition of the dog at the time has to be optimum. Um, has to be, the dog has to be hungry if he's a food-driven dog. Mm -hmm. Or uh, so therefore, you know, the, the days beforehand, um, leading up to the to the job, um, yeah, the dog needs to be trained up and set up for, mm -hmm. for the work. Mm -hmm. uh, if he's, if if you overfeed the dog, mm -hmm. then he's not going to want to work because right. he doesn't really have the desire mm -hmm. to be rewarded anymore. Mm -hmm. So, so the dog needs that incentive mm -hmm. to want to work. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't we all? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, we all like to get paid at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. The dog has to be motivated. Okay. Okay, that's the number one priority mm -hmm. when we go on, on a job. Mm -hmm. And other than that, it's just made, basically just a lot of sniffing. Yep. <laughs> okay, so you get to the job and um, you know your dog's well set up, as you say. You send it under the house. What happens then? Well, we, we then work on the dog's behaviour. The dog's behaviour starts to change if the... If any odour, if that, if that given odour of the termite odour is uh, detected by the dog, uh, the dog will start to look for it, mm -hmm. right, which we call uh, looking for a scent pool or mm -hmm. chasing a scent pool. And uh, that, that then uh, shows a different behaviour in the dog. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, we've analysed that behaviour and, and, and work with that behaviour and it becomes more intense. And then finally, when the dog finds the point where they are, mm -hmm. the dog will actually sit mm -hmm. as an indication okay. that she has found them. And this is uh, the, what we see with the, the um, dogs at the airport as that's, well, isn't it? They exactly sit down right. next to someone's bag that's and right. they've found something interesting. Yes. There's, two type, there's two types of indication. There's what we call a passive mm -hmm. indication and an active indication. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't want an active dog mm -hmm. on a job like Not that because do, yeah. that's right. Mm -hmm. Or even for, you don't want dogs scratching at people's hand mm -hmm. luggage. Okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> a while back on the podcast, we talked about um, urban search and rescue dogs, and they're actually trained to sit and bark as well, but in your case, that wouldn't be necessary. Right? No, that's fine. Yeah, it's not yeah, necessary, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, uh, just sitting is good enough for me. Mm -hmm. and, now, yeah. and she'll just sit there and wait for me to go and reward her. So of all the things that people do with dogs, how did you get into sniffing? <laughs> Um, it's just, it's the love that I have for dogs. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think it's an amazing instinct that they have, you mm -hmm. know. Um, they can sniff one part per trillion yeah. of one given odour. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me that is absolutely amazing. Uh -huh. So um, the, that, fasc that fascination alone, yeah. um, and as a kid, yeah. enticed me to, to, to get the dog to find the ball and find yeah. a particular stick. So you've and, been into it as long as you can remember, Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. yes. And then, uh, and then uh, and I always um, I just thought that um, term might be a great way to to um, help yep. people with problems in their homes yep. and yep. Um, you know uh, and, I, and I, I'm also environmentally aware and um, I don't particularly believe in using chemicals yeah so if people want to um, get into sniffing and training with their own dogs mm. um, just for fun what is sort of a good way to get started I think a good way to get started is to get yourself a little puppy mm -hmm. uh, and and teach a dog and having fun with mm -hmm. your dog while you're teaching your dog to mm -hmm. scent detect. Mm -hmm. And I think the best way you can teach your, your own dog to scent detect is get them to, to find your own kids. Mm -hmm. um, the kids have a ball doing it. Yep. And if you ever go camping and your kid gets lost, you just sent your dog after him. <laughs> Excellent. Good idea. Good idea. <laughs> Although you might get in trouble for letting your dog off the lead. You'd, ha you'd keep the dog on the lead, wouldn't That's you? That's right. Yeah, absolutely. At all times. At all times. Yeah. So if I want to train my dog to find the kids, how would I actually go about getting started with that? Well, it works on uh, uh, what we call backward training. Mm -hmm. um, you basically, you put your, your child in a, in a hiding spot mm -hmm. and you take your dog to that spot. Mm -hmm. Okay, you start from there. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you introduce the command, whatever the command, you know, find Tony. Yep. Okay, find Tony and you reward the dog. Okay, and the dog starts to realise, hang on, what am I getting a reward for? Oh, there's a kid, there's Tony's here, mm -hmm. you know, so you take him a couple of steps back mm -hmm. and you do it again. The dog very soon works out that uh, he gets is... the reward when yeah. he goes to Tony. Right. Okay, so you build it from there and then mm -hmm. you take some more steps backwards. And, and so then you might introduce 
your other kid and only if the dog goes to the correct kid that That's you're exactly so, on, yeah. so once once you only start, start off with one child first mm-hmm. because the dog has to have mm-hmm. uh, that recognition mm-hmm. and once you've got one child then you can introduce the second child mm-hmm. with a different name mm-hmm. of course and then the dog will be able to distinguish the different scent from yeah. each child that sounds like hours of fun, actually. Hours of fun, <laughs> yes, exactly. So, and obviously, like with any training, the key is just just patience, right, and just a little bit of the time and not expecting it to... Exactly, because um, if you get frustrated, the dog understands that, yeah. right? We just... release we release what we call butyric acid mm-hmm. when we get frustrated. And let me we... guess, the dog can smell that. <laughs> the dog can smell that. The dog can smell that more than any other odour mm-hmm. because it's a sign of um, danger. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. And therefore, it, the dog will actually retreat mm-hmm. and will stop doing so You've got to be having fun with your dog when you're training. You much know? fun at all times. Yeah, yeah. And the more fun you have with your dog, the dog sees it as fun, the child sees it as fun, yeah. you will eventually love doing it <laughs> and uh, you'll have a ball. Excellent. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, that's something for you to try at home. And um, if you do this and you have some success, why not let us know about it? Send me an email and I'd be interested to hear about it. Well, folks, that is the wonderful world of sniffer dogs. Uh, if people want more specific uh, info, are you happy for them to contact you? Not a problem. Okay, cool. We'll have Justo's contact details on the website at houndtv.com. Thanks, Justo. No worries. Thank you.